If God is with you, you are a winner. No country in the world faces the kind of problems Israel faces. The prophets of the Bible made it very clear that the Israelites will be cast out of their own community from their own land. You know, sometimes this happens. You are so blessed, but you have to run away to stay alive. Blessing doesn't mean trouble won't come. Blessing only means even in trouble, you will stay blessed. You will flourish. At the time of God, you will see the hand of God at work. You will flourish. Your external circumstance does not determine who you are. Your internal vision determines who you are. And that is the reality. Every door around Jacob was shut, but in his vision, heaven was open. Hold that vision in your life, no matter what is shut against you. It might have taken generations to put you in bondage, but in one moment, God can set you free from history of generations of trouble. Oh, my God is a big God. He's a good God. There is no one like unto him. His promises will happen about an individual, about a family, about a society, about a country. If he said something, it will happen. rise up to our feet are we happy to be in the house of Lord this morning come on give a shout of hallelujah once again hallelujah amen why don't you look at each other and say the joy of the Lord is my strength come on let's do it the joy of the Lord is my strength amen this morning no matter what we are carrying on our backs no matter what's going on in our lives Let's remember that we serve a God who never fails to fulfill and keep his promises. Amen. Go ahead and give your praise to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. For those of you who've joined us online, we pray that the Lord's presence will dwell upon you. Amen. Let's read from uh, Psalm 100 this morning. Let's read it loud and clear together. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving, and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him, and praise His name. For the Lord is good, and His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen, amen. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. Let's look to God in prayer. Our precious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you've given to us to gather in your name, to give you praise, to give you glory. Father, we thank you that you have brought us through yet another week as we stand at the threshold of a week full of new mercies of yours Lord father we thank you for everything that you are we thank you for your endless mercies we thank you for your goodness in our lives we thank you for who you are Lord father God this morning we have gathered in your name to give you all praise because you are worthy 
There's none like you, Father God. And we, we are here to proclaim your goodness, Jesus. Father, through it all, we pray that as we surrender ourselves unto your feet, we pray that you will transform us from the inside out, that you will show us your mercy, that you will show us your grace, and that your spirit will lead us, Father. We thank you, we thank you, we worship you for everything that you have done, Lord Father. There is none like you, Father. There's no power that's greater than you. And we are waiting for new miracles and new mercies this morning, ready to receive everything you have in store for us, Father. And in everything we do, Lord Father, let it be your sweet fragrance unto you that we will knock your heaven's doors, Lord Father. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you are. We worship you. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' precious mighty name we pray. Amen, amen. Go ahead and give your praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Lord, you arise in the midst of your people's praise. Arise, 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 take your place, be enthroned.
the midst of our enemies, God will arise. In the midst of sickness, God will arise. In the midst of problems, God will arise. There is nothing that our God cannot do. Amen. Go ahead and give your praises to Him. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. The Bible says, for everyone who is born of God, He has already overcome the world because He paid it all. He sacrificed His only Son so that we could have freedom and we could be healed. We could have life. Amen. And today we stand in the presence of God, blameless. Jesus, thank you, Lord. We worship you.
There's none like you, Jesus. Your name is above all names. When we call your name, Lord, we know that you are in control. All it takes is to call your name, Yeshua, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. Oh, you are beautiful, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, as we continue to worship, we lay everything at the feet of Jesus. See, Lord, we surrender to your name. We surrender to your name, Jesus. In your name, there is hope. In your name, there is deliverance. In your name, there is healing. In your name, there is victory. In your name, there is freedom. In your name, Lord. In your name, Jesus. The enemy has to flee. In your presence, Lord, worship you.
Father. We thank you that your presence is with us. We thank you that you are God. Yesterday you were God. Today you are God and you will always be God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your table, Lord. Thank you. We pray that you will take control of the rest of this time. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together and welcome Pastor. Amen. Shall we do the confessions together? I believe in the Almighty God, our Father and Creator. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, God and my Savior. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin. He suffered, died and rose again. He ascended into heaven. He shall soon come again. I believe in God the Holy Spirit who is worshipped and my guide. I believe in holy fellowship, faithful giving and service to God in this church. I believe the Holy Bible is the perfect word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. Today as I learn the word of God here in my spiritual family, I am blessed, healed and anointed for a holy and victorious living. I will never again be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless us. Please be seated as we turn to the Holy Communion table of our Lord and Savior Jesus with utmost respect as we touch of his holy and precious body and his precious blood. Shall we read from the book of Colossians in chapter 1? And the Holy Bible says in verse number 18 to verse number 22, shall we read it together? Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is the first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were, separate, you were his enemies separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault, holding the bread and the grape juice in our hands. Shall we pray together saying, Lord, thank you for bringing us through that supreme sacrifice on the cross, your suffering, your death, and on the third day, you rose again alive, physically out of the grave. We thank you this morning as we commemorate your work for us on the cross. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending to us your salvation. Thank you, Lord, for coming in the form of your Son, in the person of your Son, our Lord Jesus. Thank you that we belong to you. Thank you that no one can claim us no one can conquer us, for we are held in your love. In Jesus' name, we bless the elements of communion as we eat and drink of it. May this month of March be a blessed month of victory, a month where we strengthen our foundations, where our foundations grow stronger. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's eat of his body and drink of his blood together. Dear Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you paid a price which you didn't deserve to pay. You are holy. You are perfect. You are God. But you paid a price for us which we don't deserve to have. Thank you that you did it out of love. 
we rededicate our lives to live in accordance with your word, to honor you with our life. May your blessing, your presence rest upon each one of us. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. The ushers are passing the bags. Those of you who are putting back the empty cups, used cups, may kindly do so. While I quickly take that time to make some quick announcements. Today I see that the church is overcrowded than usual. That's a good thing. People sitting all over, including staircases, standing all over. Keep praying for our new church. It's going to happen soon. I, there are, some of you would have noticed in the ground heaps of mud. That's because they're testing the soil for planning the foundations. Now, um, uh, that's engineering. Okay, you all got this in your hand? If you didn't, probably you're sitting on it. Now, this is for, not for us because we already know fasting prayer is there. Then Good Friday service is there. Easter service is there. VBS, Vacation Bible School for Kids is there. We all know these things. But there are people who don't know that you know. So it is for them. Do not pretend this is some confidential military grade secret and keep it in the Bible so only God will know. Give it to people that can benefit from it and let them come along with you for the program. Now, Easter Sunday venue, we will announce it on April 1st Sunday. Okay. All of you who have come to this church today for the first time, you probably are here uh, visiting this church. Uh, you, someone invited you. You came after watching us on social media, whatever. We want to welcome you and appreciate your presence here. Become a part of the church, not just a visitor, you know. This is not a park to visit. This is a family to belong. So come and be a part. Be faithful and fruitful in the hands of God Almighty. <laughs> now, you may have noticed that we don't make announcements in the church because when such large, you know, ten thousands of people gather, uh, we don't want to take time for making announcements that may benefit only a few people. So, or uh, like, you know, baptisms or child dedications or marriages or funerals. There are a lot of things that... Um, services of the church that people avail. So what we do is we broadcast it on the church WhatsApp. So sign up, uh, just go to the church website, you have the details. Sign up on WhatsApp or just register your mobile, give us the details so you get an SMS or a WhatsApp or an email or keep in touch with our social media. Pastors and staff are always, okay, so when you're on the WhatsApp, you have given us your mobile number, email, you, you're for sure going to get church announcements periodically as they happen. So that's something interesting. Pastors and office staff are always available through the week free of charge. You know, one of the things about this church is as large as it is, probably the largest in the city, it's also one of the smallest because pastors are available to sit alone and talk to you in person. You just have to make a call and come to meet. That's all. Pastors won't chase you because this is not, you know, jungle hunting. So we're not going to come and chase after you. Why pastor didn't look for me? Because you're not a deer and we're not walking around with guns. You know, you're a part of the family. And so just come over to the house, meet with us. Uh, this is your spiritual home. But give us a call before you come so that we know you're coming and we can meet with you. In case pastor, I couldn't meet pastor it's because you didn't come to meet. That's the only reason. Not because church is big or pastor is busy. Both of that is true. But if you would have come, you would have met. Today, uh, we are going to pray for all the women in the church. 8th of March is International Women's Day. And we're going to celebrate the women in the church. Come on, men. Give it up for the women. All the women, would you please stand? All the women, please stand. Wow, look at the color you bring to the congregation. 
You're the beautiful part of the church. We're going to pray for you that God's blessing will be on you as a mother, sister, as a, you know, parent, as a spouse. Now I have to say this, with the kind of confusions the entertainment industry is bringing, especially among the women, challenging the women to be something else from what God has meant for you to be. We're going to pray that the Holy Spirit will strengthen you to continue to be successful, to be victorious. Society has always been regressive, has been aggressive, oppressive to the woman. I'm not sure why, but somehow that's been true across the nations around the world. But the scripture is the greatest emancipator of what God called his sons, his daughters. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit has no gender. In Christ Jesus, we're all one and the same. So we're going to pray for God's abundant favor upon each one of us. Shall we close our eyes as we pray? Father, I want to thank you for the woman of the church. We speak your blessing upon their life for God. In all the roles that they have to uh, dutifully, sincerely do in the responsibilities of life, may your holy anointing be on them. Father God, at whatever age or stage of their life, we pray every woman standing here is going to walk in the abundance of your grace. In the victory by your Holy Spirit. That every woman who calls on your name is going to experience your presence. A greater fulfillment. A more anointed future. And maybe for the unfairness or the pains they may have gone through. Thank you that you are able to pay back greater victory. Greater rejoicing. Greater favor. Because you're a God of greater abundance. Hallelujah. In the name of the triune God Almighty, I speak your blessing upon them, O oh Father. Let them be blessed in their health. Let them be blessed in their finances. Let them be blessed in their homes. Let them be blessed in their relationships. Let them be blessed when they face challenges that they'll come out victorious. To you be all the glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people said... Amen. One more round for the ladies in the church. God bless you. God bless you. Please be seated. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> this month we are, are going to meditate on God's holy word about, uh, about strengthening our foundations. Foundations need to be strengthened, especially... When there are things, disasters like earthquakes, the first buildings that fall are the ones that have weak foundations. When there are storms and floods, the first buildings that crumble, that get crushed, are the ones that have weak foundations. And foundations can be strengthened. And it's good to do it so periodically, especially when there are challenges. And in our Christian life of faith, when we walk with God, it is so important that we strengthen our foundations periodically. Foundations of Christian life ought to be strengthened. And one of those foundations is a life of prayer, and I call it effective prayer. Because there are traditional prayers, there are really boring prayers, then there are excited prayers, then there are Pentecostal prayers. Then there are, you know, other kinds of prayers. What is the prayer the Bible prescribes? And I call it, one of those prayers, what I call is effective prayers. Making prayers that are effective. So let's start with a joke. <laughs> one guy was going for a revival prayer, a huge revival movement. He went for the revival prayer, heard the preacher preaching really strong, ran up to the preacher and said, can you pray for my hearing? The overexcited preacher in that revival, in that prophetic anointing, put both his hands on the two sides of that man's head and started praying for the hearing of that man because he asked for prayer for hearing. And the whole church began to pray, God, heal his hearing. Hearing, heal his hearing. After a few minutes of consistent prayer, the pastor took off his hands, 
snapped his fingers and said, how is your hearing, brother? And he said, I'm not sure. Hearing is going to be next Wednesday in the high court. <laughs> A lot of times, our prayers are not effective because somehow they've missed praying right. So praying right is very important to be effective. Ephesians chapter 1 gives us a glimpse of how Apostle Paul prayed effective prayers. Let's read from verse 16 to 19. I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, might give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his great might? And what is the, according to the working of his great might? Great might. Sometimes I feel Bible uses such hyperlative, superlative, uh, almost so close to what we think is impossible, you know, because sometimes to bring God's way of doing things into human language has to break some norms of human grammar because God cannot be contained in the conjunctions and adjunctions and the grammatical rules that we have put in our own verbiage and society. But I want to deal with three words from that passage or three operative words in that passage. There are more, but I want to deal with just three to understand how prayers can be more effective. Three from that passage. One, I give thanks. Second, wisdom and revelation to know the hope of calling. Third, the power of God that works for those of us who believe. The three things that I want to uh, study with you. Number one, I give thanks. Let's say that together. I give thanks. You know, every time we come to pray and we must pray at least once every day. Every time we come to pray, either personal prayer or as a family together or with friends. When you pray every day, the first thing the Bible reminds us, Psalms 100. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with Praise, praise is an ex experience of, of exalting God, of confessing God is better than everyone else. God is greater than everything else. Whether it's the pleasure I'm enjoying or the problem I'm facing, God is greater than both. That is what is the meaning of praise. And the Bible is saying, Apostle Paul is saying, when I think of you, I start with thanksgiving. And I think that's the most difficult part in human life. Because when you think of people, it's hard to be thankful. Now, I'm not saying it's hard to be thankful. I'm saying it's hard to be only thankful. Yes, you sometimes are thankful because there are good people in your life or people that have done good in your life. But only good things? Only thankfulness? Mm -hmm. It's a mix it bag. You have things of pain, you have things of thanks. But Apostle Paul says, when I think of people in my life, God, I come with thanksgiving. What's he saying? When I come to your presence, I take time to catalog, to compartmentalize, to collect negative feelings, put it in the side and pick up good feelings and feel thanks to you, O God, and take time to thank you, O God, because effective prayers require the engine of the prayer, require the front of the prayer to be praises and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Effective prayers requires a heart of thanksgiving. It's easy to develop that. When you go to a courtroom, you go to the uh, judiciary, you know, the city civil courts or the honorable high courts or the supreme courts, keep your mobile phone off. And when you sit down, you cannot put your leg on leg. huh? And you can't just get up and walk around. And when the judge comes in, all stand up. 
<laughs> because the bench clerk or somebody will shout, all rise. And when the judge leaves, all will rise. Can't stand there and talk. Can't be chewing bubble gum in a way that is distracting. That's a courtroom. Classroom, same thing. Teacher comes in, good morning, madam. Everybody sings in chorus. There's a uniformity. There is a way of behaving. You can't be sitting there and throwing papers. You can't be sitting there and talking to one another. You've got to be focused. You can't say, no, no, no. I like to turn to the east and sit. No, you have to look to the teacher and sit. No, no, no. My Deva Mula is in another direction. Whatever direction. <laughs> classroom, look towards the teacher. <laughs> your courtroom has a discipline. Your classroom has a discipline. How about the prayer room? We know how to respect a judge who may or may not be giving you a favorable right judgment. We know how to respect a class teacher. Whether or no she teaches and you understand. How is it that when we come to God Almighty, we become casual all of a sudden and expect him to be serious about our prayer. We are casual about his presence, but he has to be serious about our prayer. <laughs> Have you seen stupid people? No, because they are in prayer room sometimes. Be wise in your prayer room. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. <laughs> Hallelujah. Take time to feel thanks. Don't be like that in-flight attendant. Thank you for coming, sir. And you stand there for one minute. Sir, please move. <laughs> Don't be heartless when you talk. When you come to Christ, take time to feel thanks. Take time to feel praise. And for that, you have to meditate on him and his word. Don't come in the prayer room and think nothing. That is not Bible meditation. When you think nothing, Bible calls it sleeping. When you come to God's presence in prayer, you want it to be effective, think on him, on how great he is, on how good he is, and on his promises. Hallelujah. He is not only willing to fulfill his promise, he is able to fulfill his promise. Man, I love that about my God. Hallelujah. When you meditate on him and on his word, you are no longer praying out of personal weakness or the fear of it, but you're praying out of God's ability in your life. You're praying out of confidence in what God can do. Hallelujah. Sometimes when we are faced with challenges and as pastors, we have to pray over situations that look hopeless, literally hopeless. The other day, that man called me and said, Pastor, my wife took the bag and she left. I said, call her. He said, she blocked my number. I said, what can I do? Can you call her? I said, okay, but first we'll pray. Give me some time. Let me pray. He said, yes, pastor, I called you to pray. It's a misunderstanding. She's very upset. Can you pray? We prayed together. And I told him a couple of things, what I'm telling you. you know, whenever you think of her, thank God for her. Don't think all negative things. Take time to pray with thanks. <laughs> After two, three days, I called him saying, should I call her? He said, why? I said, because you told, oh, I forgot to say she came back. When she leaves, pastor has to know. When she comes back, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, somewhere here, bro, I love you. I love you both. I love you both. Then, of course, they came and met me together. They were so thankful. You know, effective prayers require you to approach the situation with God on your side, and you pray about it with the heart of thanksgiving, with praises to God, knowing what God is able to do, no matter how terrible your husband or wife or that situation is. <laughs> Don't pray out of fears of personal weakness. God, I can't. God, I can't. Of course you can't. That's why you are praying, because God can. 
So don't come and tell God, I can't, I can't. God says, I know. What, what do you want? God, you can. Yes, I know. And since you know I can, I will do it if you give me space. I will do it. Hallelujah. But if you keep chasing her away every time, pastor pray, it won't work always. Because when we pray, we also have to bring our life in obedience to God's word so that answers to prayer and blessings can stay with us. You cannot keep chasing the blessing away and asking God, God, send some more blessing, let it stick to me. God says, develop a lifestyle where when I bless you, it sticks on you. Hallelujah. I've been pastoring here for 26 years. You will never hear me criticizing anybody from the stage. You will not hear me criticizing anybody from the stage. Now, jokes I say, that's different. But criticizing, no, I don't. Because I found in the Bible that when you, when you speak negative and you speak uh, evil, it's hard for blessings to stick on you. So it's very simple. Change the style of preaching. So I changed my style of preaching. I changed my style of talking. And I'm blessed by that. And all of you who are practicing that, you're blessed by it. So effective prayers require an attitude change. Second, the Bible is saying in that passage you read that God will give us wisdom and revelation to be enlightened in the hope of the calling. That means when we pray, Apostle Paul is saying, we need to be filled with divine wisdom to understand the great scope, the great hope that is your inheritance in the calling in Christ Jesus. In other words, unless you pray, you won't discover all that God has for you. Prayer is a requirement for you to discover what God has for you. Now, some people sometimes say things like, and it's happened to me. When I pray more only, more temptations come. When I pray more only, I don't know why I make more mistakes. I'll tell you what, when you pray more, even the devil works against you to fail you so that your faith will go down. But don't give up your prayer. Continue to pray and you will win in the name of Jesus. You will be victorious. Hallelujah. But pastor, the more I, I grow spiritually, more temptations, I commit more sin, I speak more wrong, I do more wrong things. Yeah, no problem. Continue to pray. Continue to believe. One day your prayer will grow stronger than your weakness. Your prayer will grow stronger than your mistakes. Your prayer will grow stronger than your temptations. Keep going in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13 says, It is God who is producing in you both the desire and the ability to do what pleases him. So the Bible is saying effective prayers in the language of Apostle Paul, that when we pray, and we seek the Lord constantly, God begins to give us the wisdom which includes right desires and divine abilities. Sometimes when you pray, you see the way your, your desires change. God is not sending someone to prophesy over you. Sometimes he does that. But a lot of times or almost always, he's changing your desires on the inside. You're praying for a house and suddenly you feel, no, no, maybe I should pick up a car now. Pray some more on it. Or oh, maybe that's because my neighbors are influencing me. Maybe, not sure. Pray for some more time. Maybe God is working on your desires. And there, oh, but pastor, I don't know driving. <laughs> I can't drive. <laughs> no problem. His ability will work in you. Pastor, I can't write that exam. His ability will work in you. Pastor, I am not a husband material. His ability will somehow work in you. <laughs> Pastor, I just cannot take up that. His ability will work in you. Pastor, I can't talk. I, I, I stammer. And they're giving me a sales job. You will top the chart. Why? His desire comes with his ability. If God is giving you the desire, God will give you the ability. Hallelujah. 
availability brings ability are you available for god to put his desires for your life in you then he is able to make that happen hallelujah god puts an inspiring desire through his divine wisdom now be careful that you don't speak against it after your prayer many times we pray for heaven to come down on the earth and then when prayer is over and our friends come together we talk like hey when will heaven ever come down don't <laughs> don't behave talk think opposite of what you prayed okay this section and one person here understood now let me come to the other side i guess today i have to go all over the place don't, don't speak behave make gestures have attitudes against what you believed for in prayer when you pray you get into a certain attitude a certain way of thinking a certain way of talking to god when you come out walk like you spoke to god talk like you spoke to god oh come on church today god is strengthening some foundations because he's going to put some more layers on some of you hallelujah in the in the holy bible there is a book called the book of job <laughs> he's the only fellow in the bible who couldn't do any job <laughs> because he went through such audacious ridiculous terrible terrible situation some of you you're still just coming out of the trauma of the lockdown you're coming out of the trauma of losses if you read what job went through it's terrible much more terrible this guy went through and and, and what really confuses most christians is the bible starts with saying god is saying there is no one holy and pure like job when a fellow is so holy and pure like job we don't expect him to go through trouble now i am not criticizing job and i am not trying to find fault with job but i am trying to show you something which is already in the bible the bible says job said there is a reason why all this happened to me because i always feared this will happen does it feel like some of us <laughs> don't write the next chapter of the book of job for yourself <laughs> he's saying i always feared this will happen that means in prayer when he offered sacrifice the bible says he used to offer sacrifice daily to god at that time faith level was high but when sacrifice everything is over hmm, he used to cultivate he used to babysit fear of what is going to go wrong in his mind and now he says all the misfortune i went through is something i had already imagined the law of first creation you create it inside you first then obviously outside it has to happen create blessings inside create god's favor on the inside create god's goodness on the inside that's why you should avoid people and conversations and lifestyles that weaken your faith or your blessings in the church avoid such conversations and and if it's really bad then avoid such people also you know don't don't give them a room to influence you don't allow them to change your way of thinking sunday you hear god's word you're all pumped up you know god is blessing you you know god brought you to the church you know that god planted you here you know you're going to be fruitful and then somebody comes and says that church oh that group something it may not be that church may not be maybe something else oh, why are you so religious oh you think god will do everything now when they say such things don't let it stick in your heart don't go to fight with them we don't have to have the bangalore dog anointing <laughs> bangalore dog if one dog bark here simply the other fellow will bark 
It's almost like, you know, they owe it to one another. Don't do like that. Don't, don't. You don't have to quarrel with people who, who weaken your faith. But you know how to stop them from influencing you. Hallelujah. Don't call them for coffee with you. Don't uh, gossip. You know there are some people if you WhatsApp, you will get back negative comments. Keep them away. Don't WhatsApp them. Don't text message. Don't call them because you know they will do something, say something. Pastor, but I'm living with such a man. Now, that's a different uh, situation. I'm living with such a lady. Okay, now that, that you really need more of God's grace. But you still can protect your inside from accepting what they are trying to put on you. In my vacation time, in my childhood, I used to go to the farmhouses, you know, uh, uh, villages. And uh, uh, I've seen there are some plants when it rains, that leaf will not get wet. It's got like an oily coat on it. It's got a coating which is like, I don't know what leaves they are. You know, students of botany will know. But those plants, those leaves, they remain dry and they don't look wet at all. Sometimes you'll have pebble-like water drops rolling off the leaves. Some leaves are, you know, you know they're baptized in the rain. <laughs> But some other leaves are so dry and you tap them, those pebble-like things will roll off and, and it looks dry. Why? It's got a coating on it. When you want your prayers to be effective, you got to coat yourself on the inside with the word of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. When they talk against your faith, when they talk against the word of God, when they talk against your worship in the church, when they talk against you giving your time, your talents, your treasure to God, don't you allow it to stick to you. Go with the coating of the Holy Spirit. Don't show them anything. Don't speak back to them, but let it just drain out of you. Let it just go away from you. On the inside, you are ready for an outpouring of God's grace. You don't want... You don't want people's negativity. Oh, my boyfriend. Oh, my girlfriend rejected me. She said, I'm useless. Maybe she's true. But you believe. Maybe he's true. But you believe God's word and avoid them. And keep God on your side. Hallelujah. The other day, one girl told me, why did God do this to me? I asked, what? She said, my boyfriend came so close, messed my life and went off. Why did God do this to me? I said, say that again. <laughs> my boyfriend came close to me, messed my life and went off. Why did God do this to me? I said, I'm not able to understand. You are a, gradu you're a student in graduation college and you are asking such a question. Boyfriend came, messed you up. Why did God, how did, how, did, how did God come in the picture? God is the one you avoided all the time. When you want to blame somebody, where is God? Huh? Where is God? <laughs> when you want to mess your life up. Hey, listen, there's no point in making a fool of yourself. The point is, let's be smart. When that fellow or that lady comes or that conversation comes or that what looks like a blessing comes that moves God out of your life, tell them, excuse me, God priority, you secondary. Don't say that, but keep that in your heart. Don't say that. No, I want to be bold. Then you go ahead. I mean, that's your kismet. God has given the church a vision. Make that your vision in prayer and move forward with the church. Hallelujah. I'll tell you a true story. A high school girl uh, came to me. She could not study well and she had problems with her mind. And the worst part, and it was getting worse. And the more sad part was financially they were very poor. So she couldn't afford tu tuitions. And the worst part is she lived in a dysfunctional family. Her father was a, sorry, I can't give you details, but yeah, it was a bad situation. So she came to me one day saying, uh, 
I don't know, pastor, but do you think there is meaning in prayer for me? Because this is my mental state. This is my financial state. I don't think I have money for further studies. I can't even do my tuitions because I don't have money. And this is how my parents are. I don't know how long my parents will be around and I don't know with whom I will live. So I heard the person and I asked her, can we change the way we pray? Hereafter, can you start saying, God, thank you for my parents. Thank you that they may be wrong, but you are not wrong. You put me in the right house, but they are making a mistake. But I thank you that you can change them. I thank you that you can bring resources in our life. I thank you that you can change my mind. You are able, oh God. I told her, when you're praying, stop looking at yourself and start looking at God. And she said, all right. <laughs> Two, three years down the line, <laughs> she came back to me. She said, do you remember me, pastor? I said, of course I remember. I used to pray for you. And occasionally she would come and meet me also in prayer. She said, you know who are beside me? And I knew, they, they wouldn't speak English. The parents wouldn't speak English. But I knew it was her parents. I said, they are your parents. She said, yes, pastor. They don't understand English, so I'm helping them go to another church where they understand English. But I will be here, pastor. I said, sure, no. She was afraid I would say, go to, your ch go to their church. So as a family, you can worship God. So she was worried I'll say like that. So she said, I will be here. I said, okay. She said, you know what, pastor? Both my parents, things have changed. And she reminded me, it all started when I came to you. I thought you will put your hand on my head and pray for me. But instead you gave me a lecture and sent me. But that changed my life. That changed my family. Sometimes it takes time, but God is faithful. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Wisdom and revelation in the calling, in the hope. Hallelujah. You get that when you pray to God. Number one, we understood, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Second, the wisdom and revelation of God's call where he deals with our desires and he gives us the power and we cooperate with him in his calling on our lives. And we avoid the negative powers that come to distract us from the greatness of his call. And lastly, the third one. The Bible is saying in that passage, his great power works according to our faith. Bangalore is getting Kaveri water. You open the tap once a week, twice a week, one sound will come, then water will come. Glug, 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 glug. Water will start coming. Only so much water. Go to Kaveri River, Talkaveri. Man, it's such a huge river. It's such a huge river. But in our house, we have to line up all the buckets and the pots so that when they come, you start filling quickly. Pastor, such a big river, why only little water comes? Because in between there is someone called BWSSB. <laughs> that, <laughs> they are good people. <laughs> that connect small, <laughs> that connect small one inch pipe from your house to a six inch pipe to a three feet pipe to an eight feet pipe that finally connects to the pumping house. But by the time that big river reaches your house, glug, 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 glug. Why? Why? Because the entire system of connectivity is like that. God is so big then why in my life it's only glug, glug. Why? <laughs> Why that greatness is not flowing? The connection is called faith. The Bible is saying very clearly. Okay, you clap, you clap, you clap. That's good, you clap. Bible is saying very clearly that great power of God works according to our faith. Little faith, little... Blah, blah. Bigger faith... 
bigger flow. God is the Almighty. And the connectivity is the issue. Many people, when we come to pray, you know, we are searching for network. Still buffering. Waiting for that feeling to come. We need to grow out of these things. Walk in faith. Walk in faith. Hallelujah. Pastor, I, it's not working for me. First you come every Sunday. <laughs> faith. The Bible says in the book of James, <laughs> the other day one man was telling me, in your church everybody gets it when you preach, you know. <laughs> I told him, yeah, because through the week when I pray, I get it, so I just pass it on. <laughs> According to the faith, so faith has works, let's say that together, faith has works. You remember the book of James? Anybody who says they have faith but they don't have works of faith, their faith is dead. It's like they have no faith. So faith must have a lifestyle. One of the lifestyles of faith is that they don't get tired of doing good. Because their faith is not in doing good. Their faith is in God. And as a result of their faith in God, doing good happens. <laughs> ah, some of you are getting it now, right? Some of us get tired of doing good because we think good will reward us. Good won't, may not reward you. God will reward you. Faith in God must result in doing good. Okay, let's read. Let's read. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. Let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, we will reap. That next line is so important. If we don't give up our prayer, our faith, our works of goodness. If we don't give up. Hallelujah. If we don't. Three times I locked this church and gave the keys to the senior pastor. My dad saying I can't. I didn't give him actually. I left it on the table. I didn't give him because I was afraid he'll not give it back. Somewhere I was half-hearted, you know, because people were not coming. I was tired. Some Sundays, no one would come. 1996, 97 onwards, it was continuous. So, three, I thank God in his mercies. I went back and took the keys, maybe after one hour, maybe after one day, to the basement hall and restarted the church. Don't give up. Those days I preached, no one came. And I would feel so upset. I'm doing good. I'm doing everything right. Why it's not growing? Why nothing is working? And then somebody invites me to preach in a convention. Big crowd. How's your church? Uh, uh, you started? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> and before they can ask next question, I will only fill it up. Mighty presence of God. Good move of God. We are seeing things happening. All that is true. Only thing I'm alone. Because I'm afraid they'll ask next question. <laughs> Thank God in his mercy, I did not give up. He kept me going. And the worst part is, you know, my friends say, hey, last Sunday 25 came, last Sunday 50 came. And I'm like, praise God, I'll call you. Because I, I am finding it hard to say only three came, only two came. Out of that one went off halfway. When you do good, don't give up. Pastor, how long will I be a good wife? How long will I be a caring husband? How long will I be a you know, son that loves the parents? Don't give up. Don't give up. Your faith is not in the good you do. Your faith is in the God. And you do good because of your faith in God. Hallelujah. I came to church. Now, where is the blessing? Don't put your faith in the action that you do. Put your faith in the God you believe in. And actions come out of that faith. 
Don't grow tired of doing good. In other words, I need to pray without getting tired of doing good. Some of us, we pray, but we are tired of doing good. Hereafter, I won't do good. You bless me, God. No, that's not how to pray. You got to be faithful and you got to be fruitful. It's not enough to be faithful. You also must be productive. I am faithful pastor. Praise God. How about fruitfulness? How about being productive? It's important to bring the wisdom of fruitfulness into the character of faithfulness. And don't change because you're bored. Change because you want to grow. When we talk of prayer, this is very important. Don't ask God for change just because you're bored with the old. Because then you're getting tired of doing good. Ask for change because you want to grow greater. Hallelujah. Some of us, we never get tired of doing the same things. For example, food. You eat every day, right? Oh, come on. You do look like eating every day. Praise God for that. Right? Now, do you ever get tired of eating? No. We have a wash every day. Do we get tired of it? Hopefully, no. Some of us are never tired of mobile phone. We're watching the screen. In other words, we are not looking for change everywhere. We are only looking for change in selective areas. So allow God to change us, not based on our likings, but based on what's best for us according to his calling. Don't change because of boredom. Don't change because it's repetitive. Change because there has to be growth in our life. I want to close with this true story. One man in our church, he's retired and he shared the story with me. He said, Pastor, I have five siblings, all died before the age of 40. And I'm often, he's a retired man. I grew up an orphan because my parents also died before the age of 40. It's a very mysterious thing. Five siblings dead, he's the sixth one, parents dead. And I said, wow, you just celebrated your retirement. You know why, Pastor, I told you this? And I had gone to meet him in the hospital, prayed with him. He said, the reason I'm sharing this with you is, Pastor, this, this you know, some, some hand broken, something like that. He said, this is very minor, but have you seen the accident? What happened? It's a miracle I'm alive. I said, yeah. And he said this to me. He said, Pastor, I have a feeling. You know why I'm alive? I have a feeling. I said, I don't know. I'm sure God protected you, but what's your feeling? He said, Pastor, my feeling is I'm a volunteer in the church. I faithfully come and do my job from the last eight years or 10 years. That's after he crossed 50. He was very faithful in coming to, I, I, I mean, I, sometimes I don't get to see it because, you know, a lot of people work behind the scenes. And he said, I'm faithfully serving God. He says, while I'm on this hospital bed recovering, I know in my heart the reason I'm alive. God has kept me alive is because I want to come back and continue to serve God. You know, when you are not tired of doing good, your prayers become effective. <laughs> whatever, whatever happened around you, whatever happened to other members of the family, he says, one reason I'm alive I believe is because somewhere in his grace, he gave me that heart to serve him, pastor. Because I told him, take rest for some time. Anyway, you're retired now. I didn't think of he being a volunteer in the church. He's a very active person. So generally I was saying, he thought I'm talking about volunteering in the church. No, 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 I'm coming back. <laughs> and don't stop me. Because, I, because his children and all told me that he's very active, he doesn't listen, doesn't take rest. So I was trying to tell him take rest. He thought I'm trying to say, don't become a volunteer, don't come back and volunteer in the church for some time. So he was trying to justify, saying, don't stop me. The reason I'm alive, I know when everybody around me died, I'm alive is God considered me to serve him. And you're not going to stop me, pastor. I'm going to serve don't get tired. When you pray, don't get tired. Close your eyes and say, Father, I'm not going to get tired. I want to strengthen the foundations of prayer. 
I want to get back into prayer, oh God. Some of you who probably lost it with God. Like that joke of that boyfriend who messed her life and she was blaming God. You know, something went wrong. The right thing to do is get closer to God. It's an oxymoron. It's foolish to turn against God. Because if there's someone who really loves you and wants to bless you, it's God Almighty. Turn to him. Seek him. Obey his word. Make a lifestyle change. Don't let your heart be hardened in unbelief. One of the proof of faith is obedience to God's word. Obeying God's word. Bringing our lifestyle in confirmation. Bringing our lifestyle in accordance with God's word is a proof of our faith in God. Hallelujah. His power works according to our faith. His power is almighty. But is our faith large enough to contain that? Is our faith good enough for God's work to flow through us? Shall we talk to the Lord saying, Father, today I really rededicate my life. This month, I want my foundations to be strengthened so that you can build bigger on my life. So that I can have a taller structure. This month of March, strengthen my foundations, O oh God. Sometimes when relationships shake my foundations, sometimes when circumstances around me shake my foundations, sometimes my own habits, my own attitudes, my own sinful nature, my own weakness shakes my foundations. Today I come back to you, Lord, to strengthen my foundations, starting with prayer, to make my prayers more effective. Hallelujah. To have that culture of praying every day, of honoring you in prayer. Thank you for speaking to me today. You've planted me in this church, Lord. I'm going to bear fruit for you. I challenge myself to grow in your grace. Hallelujah. 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 In my finances, in my relationships, in my personal etiquette, I'm going to grow, O oh God, because I'm created for your glory. The challenges will not destroy me. Because you are for me, I know I will grow by your grace. Heavenly Father, this beautiful day, we want to thank you for speaking to us, Lord. The clarity of your word from the prayer of Apostle Paul. To be thankful. To have your wisdom to understand the greatness of your plan for us. And to be people who believe you so that your almighty power can flow through us. To put our faith into action and not get tired of doing the right things. Not because we believe in the right things, but because we believe in you. And our belief in you brings out the right behavior. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray and the people said, Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. What peace we often for Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Rob
Clap your hands, lift up your voice, just praise God continually. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for renewing our hearts, refreshing our hearts through your word today. We thank you that your love is unchanging and everlasting. Thank you, Lord, for the teaching of your word on prayer. God, we pray that our lives will be filled, that will be built on the sure foundation of prayer, that our prayers will be quoted with your word, with your grace, with your wisdom, Father God. And Lord, help us, O oh God, not to be weary in our prayer. Thank you, Lord, that your word has engraved our hearts today. We worship you. Father, at this time, we pray for those who are here for the very first time, who are watching us today for the first time. In Jesus' name, Lord, we speak forth your divine blessings upon them, that your salvation, your grace, your peace rest upon their hearts. Lord, we pray for those who are traveling this week. May your divine presence go with them. We also pray for those who are celebrating their birthdays, their marriage anniversaries this week. Thank you for adding another year into their life. We pray for your fruitfulness, your blessings to rest upon them. Father, we also pray for the tithes and the offering that people have offered to you. The Lord, we pray that you would bless the hands that has given, that let them not lack any good thing, that your divine provision rest upon their lives. We give you all the glory, worship, and praise. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the sweet abiding presence of the Holy Spirit rest and be with us from now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Those who are here for the very first time, we want to welcome you once again. Come on, church, give them a warm welcome. And if it is all right with you, we would love to meet you in our guest launch. Those who are watching us online today, we welcome you too. And pastors, you are here right in the front as well as outside for prayer. God bless you. Have a blessed week.